Hello everyone, this is Levi Sheridan, and today I am making an update video on my casted two-stroke engine. I have spent the last few days working on the design of this engine, and I would say it's about 75% complete. In this video, I'm going to show each part, how the engine is assembled, the assembled engine as of yet, and I'll just talk a little bit about the engine in general. So I'm going to start with the piston. This piston is very similar to the piston I manufactured in my last video. In fact, it's almost exactly the same except for a thicker piston head. Uh, it has the same wear ring, which will help reduce friction and improve seal. It also has the same stainless steel wrist pin, which will also help reduce friction. The piston is connected to the connecting rod, and this is it. It has two oil embedded sleeve bearings here, and the assembly looks like this when it's connected to the piston. The way it is assembled is by sliding out the wrist pin, inserting the connecting rod, and then reinserting the wrist pin which will then hold the connecting rod where it needs to be uh, will hopefully pivot well there is very little contacting surfaces between the aluminum of, aluminum of the connecting rod and the aluminum of the piston the majority i would say about 90 percent of the contacting surface is between the stainless steel wrist pin and the the bearing which will greatly reduce any kind of friction uh, that would be there due to aluminum on aluminum contacting surfaces so this is the assembly, it's very simple and it, it, it will be easy to assemble. I know this will cast well because I've casted it. I don't know about the connecting rod, but the connecting rod is a very simple geometry and I think it will also cast quite well. The next part that connects onto here is the crankshaft, which is here. The crankshaft is made up of a few parts that are the two bearings. There's a stainless steel journal bearing and then the two casted halves that act as counterweights and kind of hold the whole thing together. I'm gonna get rid of these bearings for a second so you guys can see those parts here. So these are two casted parts. This is the output shaft here. So this, the output shaft will be in line with these two shafts here. This is the journal bearing that connects to the big end of the connecting rod. And uh, these are two sealed bearings, which are important that they're sealed because the, the crankcase, which I'll show in a second, has to be sealed. And these are inserted in the crankcase. Um, but when it's connected to the piston assembly, it looks like this, so that there's the, the crank shaft with the bearings. There is some clearance in between the connecting rod and the inner walls of the counterweight so that if there is thermal expansion or when there is thermal expansion, they won't rub up against each other. Same with the outer wall of the, uh, outer wall of the, the counterweight and the bearings. There's a little bit of a air gap in there that will help reduce any kind of contacting surfaces or the possibility of a, a contacting surface. But in general, this is a little, a little bit more, a little bit more complicated than the connecting rod of the piston because it has these multiple parts involved and it's important that these things are held together well and, and securely because the only thing holding these two apps together is the bearing journal. Uh, and basically, these two bearings will need to be held really well together. Uh, so the way I am doing that is with the crankcase, which is here. And this is the crankcase. So. Basically, we can see here there's a cavity for a bearing and a cavity for the bearing and when we increase, uh, when we include the, the crankshaft, you can see how the bearings sit in there and there and uh, the whole thing fits well. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the crankshaft for a second so I can talk a little bit about the, the crankcase. It's made up of two halves because in order to assemble it, I basically need to first uh, slide uh, one of the bearings from the crankshaft in, and then once that's in, basically, uh, at this point, uh, the, the crankshaft will actually have the connecting rod and the piston already attached to it. So this will be like this, and then I'll basically take one half of the, the crankcase, slide that piston on, and then I will slide the other half on, at which point the whole thing will be held together, hopefully very rigidly. There are these screws here that will hold the two halves together. There are some more screws that will hold it together, as you'll see in a second. Uh, for other features, but in general, I think this should work well. It's slightly unfortunate that I had to split the case. The alternative would, to, would be to have a, a split connecting rod. So basically, I would split this here, add two really tiny screws, and that's kind of why I didn't want to do this. I did not want to split this because I don't think it would have been strong enough. I don't think it would have held up the forces that this engine will have to endure. So that's why I have it just as one continuous thing, and it's a little bit of a convoluted manufacturing or assembly process where I basically have to take half of this off, put the connecting rod, put the other half on, and then split the case, and then put half the case on, and then other, other half on. But that's just the way I'm doing it. I think it will end up as the, the strongest solution for, for how small this engine is. Uh, but basically, like I said, you just put one half on, 
put the other half on and the reason I'm another another reason I'm not a big fan of the split is because the whole cavity has to be airtight and the in the fact that it's split is just gonna cause issues for me and hopefully I'm able to solve those issues and, and create a good seal. Uh, but that will definitely be a challenge, something I need to see how that how that looks when it's actually built out and assembled. Uh, but in general, I'm happy with the design. It's held together with these six screws. It will be tapped on this half of the case. The other one will be a through hole, so I don't need any kind of additional nuts. I just kind of all tapped in there. And all the screws I intend to use this are, are the same except for one screw, which you'll see in a second. That screw isn't, isn't designed to hold things together. It serves a different purpose. But this is the crankcase connecting rod. Uh, crank shaft piston assembly here there's enough clearance for everything it fits well there's the counterweight it doesn't hit anything nothing hits anything there's good clearance for everything I, I think uh, it will work well up to this point uh, let me put the other half on and I will go back to uh, the assembly and I'll add the, the case here so this is that whole assembly the next thing I added was the the cylinder so the cylinder is here this cylinder is very similar in terms of the features, the design features it has uh, to the, the cylinders I've made in my previous videos. If you've seen those, uh, you'll know that I've experimented with these integrated manifold ducts that basically are just included into the, the, the structure of the cylinder. So these two are, are the, the, uh, the air and fuel mixture uh, intake. So the air will go in here and come out these holes. The air and fuel will come out these holes tangentially. Uh, this is a specific scavenging uh, setup, a porting setup for Valley's two strokes where this is, this here is the output. These two are the, the input. This connects up to the crankcase where the fuel and air mixture is pressurized and then injected in the cylinder through these ports. The air goes out there, the, the exhaust goes out here, sorry. Um, and in general, I think this is like a very simple design. It casted really well. Like I, I had success with these manifolds. So I know it will work. I had success with cooling fins of a similar size and dimension previously. So these cooling fins should work. The, the, the spark plug goes up here. There would be a thread. I need to tap that. Um, but in general, like the whole cylinder is very simple. When it goes on to the other part of the assembly, it looks like this, and then there are six screws that hold it down here, uh, on a, three on either side. And that also holds the two halves of the crankcase together as well, uh, which should help. Um, but that also has to have a pretty good seal around here, so that's another challenge, another point of potential failure. And those are just things I have to think about now and then, and then come up with solutions for when I actually see what the reality of it is when I manufacture these parts. But this is the cylinder, this is the crankcase. Uh, I can do a little cross section. You can kind of see how it fits together. So there's the piston. I'll move up and down the cylinder. You can see that the, the exhaust and the in intake here. Uh, you can see how now how those holes that connect up to the intakes up there. You can see how they connect to the crankcase. Um, so this is like the majority of the engine, the majority of the assembly. Uh, the whole cylinder will like be extremely easy to assemble. It's like one part as opposed to the crankcase. It's two part. Six screws just hold it down. Everything will fit together well. There's there's very little very little that could go wrong in terms of assembling this, uh, the cylinder specifically. The next part that I had to design is, a, is an integrated one-way valve carburetor, and this, that is what this is. Uh, so over here, this lighter material is a half inch of, uh, half of an inch of, of some kind of rubber material. It's, I'm sorry, half of a millimeter of a rubber material here. And basically, uh, when air flows through in this direction, it will allow the rubber material to to go out this way. But if there's an increase of pressure on this side, it will it will close up. So this is the one-way reed valve seal. Uh, I don't know if it's technically a reed valve, but it's a one-way valve. Um, that's a one-way valve, and then basically th this part here is the carburetor. Uh, so basically, what I've done is I've integrated the 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 fuel intake into it. So basically, the fuel goes in here up through here uh, and then this is the fuel adjustment needle so I can screw this in and out and let more fuel in and out but basically the way this works is the Venturi uh, effect where the the there's low pressure inside of as the piston moves up there's a low pressure created inside of the crankcase which opens up this one one way valve the low pressure causes air to flow from the high pressure outside of the engine through this opening past the the fuel intake here or the fuel output there basically the low pressure uh the, i'm sorry the the low pressure inside of here from the crankcase uh basically pulls the fuel up through here it 
kind of vaporizes, it atomizes and mixes with the air, passes one way valve into the crankcase uh, and that should work. There is, this is the adjustment for the fuel. I can adjust the air uh, rate, the, the air using uh, this little handle here. So you can see I can rotate that handle and open and close the carburetor. So I, in conjunction with this handle here and this, this screw down here, the needle, I'm able to finely tune the air to fuel ratio and hopefully get the engine running. So when this is attached to the engine, it looks like this. And it's held together on with these two screws here on either side, which also will help hold the two halves together of the crankcase. Uh, but in general, like that's what I have so far. I have to add a flywheel. I have to add the ignition system, which is something I'm ordering online soon. Um, the output shaft, obviously. I don't really intend to like use this in any kind of application. This is just a challenge to myself to see if I can make this engine uh, run. Uh, but this is pretty much it. Like I said, the flywheel will go here or on the other side. It's undecided yet. Uh, the, there's a Hall effect sensor that times the that times the, the ignition. So the, there will have to be a magnet in the flywheel and there will have to be a mount for the Hall effect sensor and, and so on. Like I'll probably integrate some kind of mounting solution so I can attach this to some kind of stand when I want to test it. Uh, but in general, like I'm, I'm very happy with the carburetor. The carburetor is simple. It should work. I was inspired by, I believe his name's Maker B. He machined a two-stroke engine. His carburetor was pretty similar. I, th I think a cool feature of my carburetor was that I was able to integrate uh, this fuel inlet here. It's kind of just simple. It's integrated with a, thr with a carburetor housing body for this in inner cylinder. Um, but in general, it's simple. I like it. It looks nice. I like how everything attaches, uh, even though they're, even though I'm a little upset about having to split the case, I think it's ultimately the right decision and it will work. And if it doesn't, I'll do something else that will work. Uh, I like, I like the whole design. It's really nice. I think it will work if I put in the effort to get these parts to the correct dimensions and precision and the correct surface finish that I need them to be, even though I don't have a lathe, I think, I think I can do this. So I'm really happy. Uh, with it. I'm trying to use all of the same screws uh, just to save money. I, I was going to go with metric screws. So for all of you uh, metric people out there, I'm, I'm not, I didn't, uh, I didn't use Imperial on purpose to make you mad. Uh, the reason I use the Imperial screws is because the taps for the screws is uh, significantly less expensive than an equivalently sized metric. Their screw is similarly sized metric tap. The taps for metric of a similar size were like 30 as opposed to an imperial tap which was 10 and the screws are less expensive as, as well. I think it's just because I'm in the US, that's what they use here. Uh, but ideally I would use metric. I used imperial and a little bit of both. I used, I used a mix of metric and imperial, like the cylinder's 0.75 inch bore, 0.6 uh, inch stroke and I think in general like it's mostly imperial but I do like working with metric and if I can I, I mix them, I don't mind it. Um, because I'm the only one working on this. I'm not like working with other people. So no one else is getting confused. I know what I'm doing and uh, I like working like that. And ideally I would just work in metric, but this whole thing is really great. I'm really happy with it. It's about three inches tall. This is majority of the engine, like I said, about 75%. So over the next few days, I will be working on the, the other 25% and hopefully end up manufacturing it within a week or so. I don't know exactly. Like I have to order some, some parts like the bearings and, and whatnot and the ignition system and the spark plug and kind of just fine adjust and add tolerances and stuff and think about the manufacturing process a little bit more but in general very happy i really like how it looks i think it will work if i put in the effort i intend to put in the effort to get it working uh, and when it does or if it does i'll be extremely happy uh, but I, I really like how it looks so thank you for uh, watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something new and uh this is levi sheridan have a nice day